Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Here we are again, everybody's locked down, it's 8pm, the curfew's kicked in, you got your masks on, we're all, all in our respective houses and having a great time. People are signing in everywhere, look at Carol's joined in uh, already, good old, oh, good old Daniel's Daniel. calling us brutal, oh, how's that, eh? <laughs> We've even got a love heart already from somebody, we've only been on the air for like 30 seconds, so that's pretty cool. We go, um, So yeah, it's all very good, very, very exciting, and uh, hopefully you're all uh, looking forward to a great night on the tube with us. Uh, before we get too excited, I've got to introduce my lads, uh, MBS and Jeffro, how are you tonight, boys? Most excellent, dude. <laughs> Cowabunga, dude. <laughs> Let's move along. So there we go. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a chat about alien invasions. Um, this is a bit of an informal, just a bit of a gas bag, actually. Uh, I was thinking about this uh, just not that long ago, thinking about all the movies and TV shows where aliens have invaded the Earth, right? Like we don't invade, human beings don't invade anything. It's always them coming to us, whether they're from Mars, Venus, somewhere else, right? Now, if you go back to the 1950s, they're coming with all guns blazing, you know, the ships coming in and blowing the shit out of everything, right? And even as far as up like the Independence Day, it was like, nah, just come on in, blow, blow the crap out of everything. And then you've got to ask yourself, well, really, if you wanted to take over the Earth, is that how you would do it? Uh, and then, of course, if you look at it a bit more surreptitiously, there are those programs where they sort of just quietly sneak on underneath, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers is an absolute classic uh, how to take over the earth. You know, you're sort of replicating the people there. And, of course, V uh, in both formats uh, it was all about they arrive here as the aliens arrive here as friendly visitors, uh, but on the QT they're taking over everything and they're going to destroy the earth. And uh, I was just intrigued to see, it was just a bit of fun really, about um, what you guys think about alien invasions, mate. The one If you're going to take over the, this earth, how would you do it? And don't say a COVID virus because that's not the answer to the question. Um, uh, of all the options, what do you reckon is the way to go, mate? I'll start with you, MPS. Oh, look, when you talk about strategy, you talk about dominance and, you know, come in all guns blazing, take over a section, you know, take me to your leader, kill the leader, and then you take over. Why not? It's the simplest, easiest way to invade somewhere. Maybe not the best way. But, you know, if you look at, say, like we mentioned, Independence Day or even Battle of the Planets, they had um, uh, those guys coming through trying to take over the, the, pla the, um, take over the Earth. It, it, it's, it's come in, big guns, survival of, the, survival of the fittest, you know, biggest dog, all that sort of stuff. So that's the way I'd probably do it. The problem is, though, with a lot of those when they come in with all guns blazing, it never wins. They never win, right? Uh, whether it's the humans fight back and think of some smart ass way to knock them off, or it's the bugs, the, the what do you call it? The um, uh, what kills them in War of the Worlds? It's the bacteria and all this sort of bacteria. stuff. Um, you can, it, it, none of those things have ever worked except for uh, off the top of my head, Oblivion. That's the only one I can think of where uh, the aliens actually won. So, uh, the, that's the, the, problem, Tom the problem with like Independence Day, they came in and waited for four weeks or whatever it was. You know, they took their time, they need to come in under the radar, take a few countries out, you know, obviously do your research, fly around in your in your stealth-capable spacecraft for a couple of weeks, work out where all the, the big ones are, and then just take out the mass areas. It's it's not too hard. It's the waiting game, you know. You come in and you wait for a while and, you know, number 27, you can come and invade the Earth this week and next week's number 28, you know, just... You would think that the Martians and the Venusians are looking at each other and they're going, well, these guys kind of screwed it up. How about we just do it all a bit differently, you know, because whether they're from Mars or Venus, they just have the same way of going about things. Um, Claire, I agree with you. The host definitely uh, has a lot to say for itself. So uh, there you go. Jeffrey, before we move on, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, the host is definitely the most cleverest because, I mean, that's the way the alien was tempting to sort of get into uh, Earth, you know, sort of uh, put itself in uh, Ripley or w whichever uh, organism it wanted to. So that was very clever. Uh, we also saw that, I think, in um, uh, one of the Quatermass movies where it's like, you know, the astronaut was uh, infected. So he'd come down and people go, oh, he looks a bit strange, you know, and all that. And eventually sort of he does morph into a, a big, ugly sort of monster. 
Otherwise, the most cleverest things are just to uh, land on Earth, wait there for a million years, and then sort of eventually take over. So uh, case in point, uh, we have things like um, the ice warriors. And again, in the ice, you know, the thing. So, you know, they've been there for absolute ages, you know, just, just wait and, you know, just uh, take your time and sort of when the time is right, bang, just uh, come out and uh, go surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Going to get taken over by a whole lot of goma piles. Is that what you're going to suggest? That, so, that's right. Particularly, I mean, if you don't have the uh, the ammunition, uh, then um, you know that's the way to do it. I mean, if you've got the um, Independence Day ships, uh, or if you've got the Mars attacks sort of uh, weaponry, then yeah, come in guns blazing. But uh, if you don't, do it the uh, the subtle way. Yeah, like what Greg has said. You know, with all the movies and TV shows as a reference, I'm going to put this up there so you can sort of see it. Um, yeah, I mean, you would have thought that they've sort of planned these things out, okay? And, in fact, if you're an invading alien species, you would almost say, watch some of the movies on Earth, realise what not to do, because, you can, you know, in the plot of the story, the humans figure out a way to defeat the aliens. You go, oh, okay, maybe that's not the way we should do it. Maybe we should do it some other way. So um, you just sort of do wonder what their motivation is. But <laughs> I like that, Ange. Ack, 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 ack. <laughs> about Mars attacks. Because I always thought that was funny, because that's why... Things like V work so well, okay? So they actually turn up here, and if, and and their plan was to fit themselves within the population, make it look like they're um, being beneficial to everybody. We're here in peace, all this sort of business, you know, cure cancers and all sort of stuff. Uh, get the scientists. I thought this was such an interesting spin. The scientists were the biggest threat to them because the scientists would be able to figure out that they weren't uh, human and they were actually reptilian and whatever else and discover their nefarious plans. And, of course, the idea being that they then start up a, um, uh, what do you call it, and, um, trying to get all the scientists taken. I've forgotten the word. Um, it's a, a conspiracy, that's right, to have all the scientists arrested and that way they could take them away, control them, and then that way humans wouldn't think anything of it. And I thought that was such a novel way of going about it. I mean, the fact mm. that the uniforms all look very militaristic probably didn't help, um, and there was a lot of references to World War II and Germany and all that sort of thing. So, But in terms of doing something different, it, uh, it actually had the potential to work quite well. And, of course, the key thing is is you want your human population to, to welcome the visitors from another world. So when they turn up here, you can say, oh, actually, we want them to turn up. We want to be your friends. We want to join your youth groups and all the rest of it. And uh, I actually thought that was very, very clever. And clearly it was uh, echoing um, uh, events that had occurred in Germany in World War II. Jeffrey. Yeah. Now, uh, in the same vein, the one I'm going to offer is uh, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons because basically uh, the Mysterons were um, uh, attacking Earth, but what they do is they kill off the person and then they replicate it. So basically they have uh, a, an evil clone, essentially, of that person. So very much like, you know, they can just walk around and nobody knows the difference, but, you know, they've got that evil agenda. So that that's one I thought would um, fit into that category. But the, that's uh, right. Sorry, yeah. I'm going to say um, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers ended up like that, even in mm. the, not in the original 50s movie, but in the 78 movie, the aliens actually won by doing that. But continue on. Yeah, but the uh, the really good one is the uh, uh, the creatures that basically going to take over the Earth, and they were already here. And the example of that one is uh, the Day of the Triffids. So these were plants that walked around. So they're already here. We were harvesting them. And it's just by sheer misfortune that everyone looked up at a uh, uh, bright lights in the sky and blinded themselves. It's like these guys going, ah, now it's time to take over the uh, the earth. So that they were there and um, they just took advantage of the opportunity. And I thought that was just, uh, just a, a clever way of sort of having someone who's going to invade us uh, just saying, well, I'll just wait and if the time's right, I'll do it. Um, Ads has mentioned about did humans start the fight in Captain Scarlet? Yeah, basically what happened was that we sent a, a Martian excursion vehicle to Mars and um, what happened was that the Martians were putting up essentially like a, a radar dish and um, we interpret that to be a sign of aggression. So we basically fired upon them. So... Um, uh, that just meant that uh, we started the war inadvertently. 
Uh, Claire's mentioned Starship Troopers now. I don't know about the book, but in the film, I think you'll find the bugs, uh, the aliens from Klendathu uh, initiated that. So there was a bit of skirmishes between the humans and the bugs to start with. And then, of course, they sent a bomb through and blew up Argentina. And, of course, once they did that, uh, it was all on for young and old. So um, I think that's the, even though the humans invaded um, Klendathu after that, uh, I think it was one of those worlds. Um, yeah, I think the bugs may have initiated that. So there you go. Because um, you do sort of wonder how many uh, productions where, I mean, there aren't many films where he, uh, aliens come to Earth and they're actually benevolent and they're actually kind and, 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 and sweet and all the rest of it. Like you can think about a couple of handfuls like Starman and E.T. and all the rest. Most of the time they're down here just the day, aggressive. The day the Earth stood still, classic example. Well, that's exactly right. So, uh, um, and of course, had that that could have all ended quite badly for everybody because um, they could have easily just unlo uh, uh, unleashed Gort. He could have just destroyed everything as he was able yeah. to do. So, um, but yeah, I think the idea of coming in and taking people over, I'll get to you in a second, PS, uh, taking people over probably works out the best way. And I think The Hidden uh, is another movie that did something similar as well because that, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the host, mm -hmm. and all, that seems to be the yeah. way to go uh, rather than coming in with all your big ships and uh, making a mess of everything. MPS? I was going to say one of the most interesting ways that I've, I've noticed in a television series that turned out to be a film much, much later on was you come in and, and try and eat all their cats like you did in Elf. <laughs> <laughs> you can invade via... Uh, different means. Forget the humans at this point. Just frustrate them all till they, you know, get um, completely insane. But chase after the cats. I think that's the way that there are. Uh, that theory should work. Um, Aaron, uh, sorry, uh, Ads is right. Yes, the aliens in Close Encounters of the Third Kind are also very, very friendly. Um, <laughs> Aaron, morons from outer space. If you had morons from inner space, it'd be probably us three just here. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, golly, golly, golly. Um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Um, Phoebe Seymour, Classic Kenners and Moran's Matter Space, as with the Balkans. Yeah, yeah. Something is that. Oh, I've just gone blank. I knew what I was going to say and it just, I've just lost oh, it. Oh, so. here's, here's one for you. Uh, talking about sort of uh, that sort of alien subtly invading and sort of they look like us and all that, but we don't know. Invaders from Mars, another classic example. You're right. And actually, I was just thinking earlier, I mentioned the movie Oblivion. That was the Tom Cruise movie, right? Where all the Jacks and they're all clones. And you're thinking, well, that worked, you know, the alien species took over the Earth then, but, of course, the humans in the end destroyed the alien ship. So the humans are still going to win anyway, so. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that, you're going, I, what? I just thought of another one. I mean, I am just kicked myself that I didn't realise it. Uh, aliens masquerading as humans, Buckaroo Bonsai, the uh, red, le red electroids. So I just couldn't believe that I had completely overlooked that until just now. Oh, yeah. he, Jeffrey, here's what you should do. Before we do any show, watch Buckaro Bonsai just again and again and again to get any reference because you seem to forget about it in a reference point of view for almost every episode. Yeah. Now, now here's one for you. Why don't they make a movie, right, where it's Mars versus Venus and you're sitting in the air like and you've got your deck chairs out there and you, all the spaceships are fighting out in the sky and you can see them out in space or whatever because you know, you've got all the, the, the space stations or whatever and you're just watching them all just blowing the crap out of each other just sitting there and thinking, this is grass. It's like, you know, like Days of Our Lives TV just for free. Those two planets are versus each other. That would be something different, wouldn't it? So, mm. um, but, uh, the, yes. The only problem with that is if there were other species within our galaxy that we didn't know of because they were hiding underneath their pictures like in the um, commercials for, for that sort of thing, um, they would involve us eventually. So we'd have to get involved anyway. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you think, you know, you, you get one group come down and try and recruit us to sort of like help them, these guys and another group turn up and say, no, 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 we'll give you better quality movies and DVDs and whatever if you join us and, you know, we'll eliminate this virus and someone says, oh, well, we'll, we'll fix that cancer and whatever else. So, yeah, I don't know how that would work, but uh, I do. Uh, I think there aren't many stories where there's an alien invasion and the invasion succeeds, like completely 100%. As I said, invasion, oh, yeah. they did that. What, go on? There is. So uh, uh, in more recent times, we saw uh, falling skies. So basically the world's been taken over by the uh, evil aliens, but you've got pocket resistances. So uh, that's that was a great show if you ever got a chance to see that. But there's always pocket resistances. It's like the Terminator series, right? Skynet rule, rules the world and there's like little humans everywhere. What you want is where it's complete domination, where the aliens have won. There's no humans left. The Gornskis, mate. That just doesn't seem to happen. You've always got to have the Hollywood ending where the humans somehow prevail for another sequel. So there you go. <laughs> Stop using logic. I like that, Michelle. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, very good. Yeah, but so uh, if there was a film where the aliens won, would we watch it? I reckon some I reckon people would. Actually. Yes, definitely. Uh, I like this one from Aaron. This is a good one, actually. Earth getting destroyed would make way for an intergalactic bypass is pretty peripheral. <laughs> <laughs> so that was any, that was that was something really completely left field. So there you go. Um, I agree. I think you would, um, although not everybody would like it. If it was going to be true to life, so you, you could look at it from the point of view saying if you have an alien species coming to Earth, whether it be uh, surreptitiously on the QT or whether they come in with all guns blazing, and they have a much better chance of just taking over and just winning completely. I think if there's an element of realism to it, and people, could, I think some people would say, you know what. That works for me. I can understand. It's bad for humanity. We all get killed off and da-da-da-da-da, but it would be a true story. Because even in the, uh, the show Cosmos by Carl Sagan, way back in the 1970s, he said that if you have two space-faring uh, cultures and they meet in space, one is easily going to be more technologically advanced than the other, and it's just going to be no contest. They'll just <laughs> wipe them out like it's nothing, right? And uh, and I that would apply here as well. So. Um, but I think some people would go for it. I mean, it'd be depressing, but I think that uh, people could say, yep, yeah, that works for me. So there you go. I, th I thought of a really good one. So uh, in the case of uh, Star Blazers, the Gamelons just sent uh, bombs from a uh, far distance and just kept pounding the Earth. So essentially they didn't have to be anywhere nearby. They just <laughs> uh, sent all these uh, uh, planet <laughs> bombs and just... Um, uh, started destroying the Earth, so it's like from the comfort of their own chairs. I reckon this is a fantastic comment. Aliens will not invade; they're enjoying the reality show Earth twenty twenty. Oh, that is adds <laughs> that is a that is absolutely fantastic. They'd be sitting back laughing their heads off at the moment, going, "See, we didn't. We just had to drop one bug down on the Earth, and it's doing all the work for us." Oh, unbelievable! Oh, that is that is that is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I agree with you, Claire, that uh, human resistance is the reason why we tell these stories, and I agree. And, and it's great for Hollywood, right? Like in the most diverse and difficult conditions, the humans will still stand up against the invading forces and somehow resist and repel and all the rest of it, and that's great. And if you like your Hollywood, it's the way to go. But you can also look at it from an, uh, an obverse point of view and saying, well, if you like true to life, and uh, um, you, you, as I mentioned before, like your invasion of the body snatches, that was still a fantastic movie, even though the humans lost. So um, I think that uh, you can certainly say, you know what, sometimes having the Hollywood ending doesn't always work. And you know, yeah, some movies are going, you know what, that's it. Like Battleship, I think someone mentioned earlier, Battleship, I think Daniel did. I mean, really? So um, that's one where the, uh, the alien should have won. So there was a, a really good one there from um, Kel who mentioned They Live. Yes, because essentially. Yeah, I mean, we've been dominated and we don't even know it. So, uh, you know, we've lost and it's not without special glasses that, that we realise that actually, you know, we've been invaded. The good thing about They Live, sorry, I'm just going to cut, just mention this. The good thing about They Live is you're right, the aliens are already here. They've mixed in with humanity and they're having a whale of a time. But there are humans who know that they're here and end up siding up with them. Right, I think uh, Meg Foster's character does that. She says, "You know, I know they're here; they're they're right there next to me. But hey, they give me all these benefits, you know, capitalistic benefits, you know, money and property and cars and whatever. And they're actually supporting their their presence. And I reckon that's very interesting. That's that takes things from a completely different perspective. And you go, if that happened in real life, right? If there were aliens amongst us right now, but they were actually boosting your lifestyle, making your lifestyle happier, and you think, okay, well, I've just got to accept the fact that there are aliens here among us. I reckon some people would go for that. So uh, there you go. Very, very cool. It sort of reminds me of... Sort of reminds me of the Matrix, you know, sort of uh, uh, just give me the fake stake, you know, and I'll, I'll, you know, sort of follow you blindly. That's exactly right. What you don't know doesn't hurt you. MPS? I was going to say, I'm sure that there would be some people... <laughs> Similar to like in um, Thor Ragnarok, where Carl Urban's character um, Ragnarok was it Thor two? I can't remember which one. Um, must be Thor two, where Carl Urban's character just kept going up um, and sucking up to whoever was the most powerful person. So I'm sure there will be some people that will would do that for their benefit. Now this you won't get this one in pairs, but Jeffro certainly will. I reckon it's a line and a half. I'm here to talk nerdy and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> You yeah, could've... that's that's Hang definitely. On. Sorry, that's uh, that's that's at my end. Sorry. Yeah, all right. You're gonna have to tell them to be quiet because we can hear it coming no, through the thing. Um, I mean, boring. it could have been. I'm here to talk uh, to talk about uh, chew bubble gum and talk nerdy, and I'm all out of nerds. So <laughs> you could have done that. But uh, no, that's actually very very cool. That's a great quote from They Live. So there you go. Um, Cloverfield. Yeah, that's one. Um, Daniel, uh, where they actually was a bit of damage that occurred from the uh, 
the aliens. So, uh, oh, that's a bit rough. Uh, Colin, the aliens are here and they're all living in Frankston. <laughs> <laughs> oh golly 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 so uh but yeah it's good that there are plenty of alien invasion movies one way or another um but uh i think as i mentioned earlier shows like v work so well because it was just so different you do get a bit blase about aliens who come barging in with all their guns and stuff blowing the crap out of everything and you go you know what it ain't gonna work the humans are gonna find a way to um fight back independence day was probably one of the best examples of that right where everything mm. completely toast no, nope, they find a way to blow up the ship. They blow up one ship and the whole thing just carks itself and that's the end of that. So you uh, definitely could argue that um, we need to learn from that NPS. I was going to say, District 9 is another example of where it looks like the aliens tried to come down for peaceful or, or take over reasons and then they just got dominated by the humans. No, they didn't. They weren't here. To, no, they were um, uh, refugees, actually, uh, on their ships. So they were uh, not here to take over. They just they oh, bred okay. all over here, and they became very unpopular with the local population. But they were never here for nefarious reasons. They were uh, yeah, refugees from somewhere else, and um, just happened to land over the top of uh, Johannesburg, or I think it was. So uh, there you go. Very very cool. How good is that? Now, um, before we finish up, uh, we'll be finishing very very soon. Uh, we. Completely forgot to talk about what year for next two weeks, and we're going to discuss why it's two weeks in a couple of weeks. But there's still some good um, comments coming through. Uh, Alien Nation. Alien Nation was different, Ange. Uh, the aliens weren't here to take over. Yes, uh, sorry, they were here as refugees. Same principle, exactly right, and they sort of melded into society. The idea of Alien Nation, it was like, how can you do a story with all these racist overtones without offending anybody? You bet the aliens and you make all the racist overtones about them. So that's how that worked. Uh, resistance is not futile. I agree with you, Claire. So you've always got to fight back, that's for sure. I mean, I love War of the Worlds, right? The aliens turned up here. They've got clearly all the superiority and they completely, of all that, forgot to do all their biological tests to say, hey, what parasites are out there? They come out of these ships not wearing any helmets or anything. And, of course, they were doomed to die after that. So uh, there you go. Very, I very cool. I just, I just thought of one really obvious one. What? The Invaders, the television show. Mm. I mean, it's got the name in it, hasn't it? The Invaders. It does indeed. So there you go. But uh, there's one thing for sure. People will always love a good alien invasion story. And if they're coming down here destroying shit, and Independence Day when they blew up those buildings in the White House, that was pretty grouse, you know. Mm. We're just saying if you worked in the White House, you go, yeah, my office is just down there. And but if I had been sitting there back in 1994, I would have been blown to the shit house. <laughs> but um, it, was, it was good fun, and I think people are going to love that, providing I think the humans win in the end. So um, uh, there you go. Very good. All right, it's 9.30. It's time for us to buzz off, even though we've still got oh, actually people leaving us already, so they've had enough nerdy talk from us. <laughs> so we're going to buzz off. Any final words before we go, lads? No. Not really. Very good. In that case, in, in the interim, we'll see you next week for our Star Wars talk, if not in two weeks' time. And uh, make sure you stay safe and, very importantly, stay nerdy. Okay, take care. Bye. See you. See you.